Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And what if we told you you could build this $200 gaming PC right at home, super easy, and we're gonna show you how to do it. And this is using some very interesting PC parts from our favorite place, AliExpress, more specifically this thing right here. But we'll talk about that here in a second. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by our favorite place, GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you want to get the best discount of the year, they have the Christmas sale going on. Use code TV20 to get 30% off. So we definitely recommend doing that. All you have to do is pay for it. And then you take that activation link, plug it into Windows and boom, you have a fully legit activated Windows license. And it's ready to upgrade to Windows 11 for those out there looking to upgrade. So if you guys want to pick up Windows 10 keys or even Microsoft Office keys, the same discount applies to TB20. Check the link in the description down below. And special thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. All right, so we're going to talk about this combo here in just a minute, but this whole PC is kind of a very entry level option for someone wanting to get into PC gaming, especially if you're overseas, because this is readily available on places like AliExpress, Alibaba, all those different websites, and it's under $100 with RAM, so it's a really good buy. Um, I did a lot of research on this to discuss it, um, so you can know exactly what you're getting yourself into, but it is a very interesting build, and it does involve AliExpress, so you're warned. So yeah, let's just talk about each part. All right, guys, what we have right here is the A10 Super Challenger from Max Sun. Now, what this is, is an all-in-one combo, basically meaning the CPU is soldered to the motherboard and it's just like a, well, thing you can't really upgrade. Um, it is basically, a A10 processor, obviously that's what it's called, uh, but it is an older FX based processor. So you're not getting like the latest and greatest Ryzen uh, set up here, but it is still pretty good for the money because then you're getting it under hundred dollars. It comes with these two RAM slots. So you can install up to, I believe 16 gigs of RAM in this thing. And there is a slot to add a graphics card and even an M.2, which is pretty impressive for this small little compact board. Now the onboard graphics, I'm actually gonna have to pull out my phone here because it's a very long model name, uh, but it is the R6 graphics that were found in like the FX based um, CPUs that used to be on like AM4. They used to make like the A10s and those CPUs used to be readily available for AM4 for a while when the uh, Ryzen launch actually happened, but um, they weren't that great. They weren't super high performing, but if you're only spending $200 on something like this, it could be a good buy for you. And more specifically, it is the RX 452BB. Um, with the RAM, it actually ended up being about $120 with shipping, which the RAM is right Right here, which they did send over eight gigs of RAM after we unwrap this. Here we go. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> so just your basic green memory, eight gigs of RAM, uh, will be good to get things up and running. And the main marketing material, which we'll have on screen here, is all about it being ready to do things like League of Legends. These are pretty popular in like internet cafes. Um, they're very, very cheap and easy to put together, but will it actually game? Well, of course, we're gonna test it and uh, see how it actually performs. But let me let Jackson talk about all this other stuff because it's gonna make it look really pretty. Now for storage, we have this team group CX-1 SSD. It's a 240 gig, just two and a half inch standard drive. Now, keep in mind, we probably didn't really know this going into it. This does have an M.2 on it and it's supposedly NVMe. So if you wanted to, you could just spend like a few extra dollars and get an NVMe where you don't have to have this extra, especially if you're doing like a, you know, micro ATX, really small compact build and you don't wanna have any extra cables. But hey, this is a pretty cheap route to go at like 25 bucks. Now for the power supply, you guys know all about these. These are the Aries game. AGV 500 watts, 80 plus bronze, all black sleeve cables. We have not had a single issue with these and we've probably done over four or 500 of them by now. Um, and that really can't be said about a lot of the high-end brands. We really always have some sort of issue here and there, but these guys so far we have been good on, so they have our seal of approval. Now for the case, we have this DIY PC. This is a DIY A9W, the W being white. And uh, it's been a long time since we've done DIY. I remember back in the day, this was the only budget case around really that actually had like lighting in it. I mean, of course you could buy like a Cooler Master case, but they had usually no fans uh, for the same price you'd get one of these. We were usually looking at like around $30 for like a really nice looking DIY PC case, but they've actually kind of evolved. Um, for a while they were sort of behind the game and like they were still just making their red LED, blue LED cases while all these other companies were making full RGB cases for just a little bit more. Um, but you can actually go to Newegg and check DIY and actually find like some RGB cases now. This one here, do we have RGB in it? 
I think this one does this not. This looks like a single white fan in, yes. in the back of all places. So we are probably gonna load this thing up with extra fans. We have, uh, Matt, you wanna show them the organization I did? So right over there, that bin is literally just 120 mil fans that are not RGB. So we have a lot of extra fans. We really need to use them. Um, and this thing can take five extra fans. So are you ready to? I'm ready. Are we gonna go ready to five, load this thing are up? Are we going five full fans? Some good this? ventilation It up really front. doesn't need it. Like you, you could do this build. I mean, if this was inside of an Xbox, uh, it would just have that fan there and it would be just fine. So realistically, the fans are very extra. We're just gonna do it just to make it look nice. But yeah, I mean, this case though is actually full ATX and it takes a full ATX power supply. It has a lot of PCIe slot, so you could add you know multiple cards if it supported it. And it does have a mesh front, so you could add like three RGB fans in the front, make it look really nice. It supports maybe a 240 millimeter radiator up top, but maybe. it'd be, it's like a big maybe. I mean, it sticks out far enough. But it does have USB 3 built in and all that. Tempered glass, pretty nice. 22 bucks, should, uh, can't complain. 22 bucks, yeah, I think we should go ahead and just put this PC together and see how it performs. Woo! Alright ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $200 PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now besides this PC in a couple of titles, those being Valorant, Fortnite, Rocket League, and Minecraft. I decided to test these games because I thought this PC would be ideal for these sorts of lower end titles, considering all the marketing material for this combo was showing that it's great for League of Legends, but it didn't do too great, I'll be perfectly honest with you. First up in Valorant at 1080p on low settings, we didn't get a great experience. It was pretty stuttery and all over the place. We couldn't get the settings any lower than they were and 720p actually didn't make any difference whatsoever, mainly showing me that this is very CPU bound which normally does help you with other CPUs like a 5600G because the actual CPU power is strong, but in this situation, there's no well, help at all. So that wasn't too encouraging for the rest of the benchmarks and Fortnite, well, just did not work. I'm not sure if it was a driver issue with the new season or what, but as you can see on screen here, we're getting a bunch of like color issues. Um, I managed to get rid of the color issues once by going into full screen mode, but then after that, when I set to performance mode and restarted, I could not get it back to normal. It was just messing up all the time. Time. Never crashed or anything, but those colors just made it unplayable, and I just deemed Fortnite a total failure. Next up in Rocket League, we decided to go to 720p for everything because 1080p just didn't seem like a viable option, um, and we only got about 50 FPS with the CPU and GPU being maxed out. It was playable. It wasn't great. It looks very, very bad. I think a mobile game probably looks better than this thing, if I'm being perfectly honest, but it was playable at 720p, um, and getting 50 FPS is something, I guess. And the last game we decided to test because, well, it's a game that should run on anything, right? 
Minecraft at 720p on a wide range of settings. As you can see here, I'm trying absolutely everything to try to make this thing run a little bit better. We're only getting 10 to 60 FPS. Um, it was very slow to load in chunks, which is obvious in Minecraft. You could lower the render distance all the way down to nothing and it would be a little bit more stable, but just moving around at all just caused a ton of lag. Now, yes, this whole combo with CPU, RAM, and the motherboard is only $100, which isn't much to ask, but I would really be hard-pressed to think that even like a second or third gen combo i5 or even an i3 with a very low-end GT710 would perform way better than this in a game like Minecraft. But if you're in another country and you cannot pick up those really good used deals, I'm assuming this is probably the best you can get for an office PC that can well play games on the side, not great, but it's a very easy solution that is low power and super easy to build with. So I do think it has a place in the market as an office setup, but for gaming, I would not make this your priority whatsoever. Now, before I finish the benchmarking section, I did decide to dive into the BIOS a little bit. Um, I do want to clarify again, this did come with 16 gigs of RAM and not eight. There will be a correction during the time lapse that you already saw, but I could have swore I purchased a listing that only had eight gigs of RAM, but we got 16, so that's cool. Your mileage may vary, but the BIOS is super limited. The only setting that I saw that looked like it could help a little bit is this FB location setting. Um, I switched it on to above 4G, which I'm assuming is four gigs, um, and it didn't really do anything. I thought that was like a RAM usage thing for the APU, but no real performance difference there, but it's just a very stock BIOS. You can do some RAM tweaking if you wanted to, but I don't think any RAM speed or RAM tweaking is going to really help this thing all that much. It is just a very poorly well, working CPU. It works for office tasks, but it's just not going to cut it for modern gaming. So overall for $200, this isn't the best thing we've ever put together. Um, but in 2021, it's kind of fitting to have this for $200 be absolutely, well, not really good for gaming. So let me know what you think down below. And if you're considering picking these up, always there'll be a link in the description down below. But yeah, more of an office PC than it is a gaming PC. But hey, at least it looks pretty cool, right? How about we bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick? All right, guys, so normally we talk about how well this PC games, but, well, this one basically just works. It would be really awesome for office tasks and, like, a home theater PC in the most lightest gaming. I mean, you have to have really particular game taste for this PC to make sense for you. The main advertising that I saw for this whole combo on AliExpress was League of Legends. So if you're trying to get into League of Legends, this would probably be a good option for you because that's a very easy game to run. If you're mainly playing like mobile type games, you'll have no problems whatsoever. But as you saw from the benchmarks, there are limitations and even lower end esports titles like Valorant, Minecraft, and even Rocket League. Rocket League was kind of rough. But uh, yeah, if you want to only spend $200 and you're in a country where this is a way better option than anything that you have it could be worth considering by checking the link down below will be a filling link and will help us out but it was very cool to see a cpu we really haven't seen before and do a pc build with it so as always we hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did let us know in the comment section down below what you want us to try next you know we love checking out weird cpu motherboard ram combos so make sure you guys leave us some links don't forget to check out our other two youtube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and don't forget to like comment and subscribe hey we'll see you guys in the next one goodbye and hey, if you want to get a much better PC than this, because I mean, this one's kind of subpar. We're all about gaming PCs. You should just check out our PC selling business. PCBros.tech. We're probably going to have this computer on there for a really good price. So if you really want this one, you want to tinker with it, definitely consider picking it up by using the link down below or just head over to PCBros.tech, buy online, come in person. See you guys later. Goodbye.